Hi, I am TV Bond, and I write the Paris and Springtime series, of which currently there are five books. Today I'm going to read for, read for you an excerpt of King of Wishful Thinking, which is book two. Now the good news is the Paris and Springtime series is all standalone because this is a story, well, the series is about a paranormal dating agency with a 100% success rate. And so each story is a case file from the dating agency from the perspective of the people who are being matched. In this particular story, the pairing is a rabbit shifter in a gin, which is a genie. He's actually a wood gin. So he has powers of the forest on top of wishing. Wishing is his thing. If he wish, if he, he can hear the wishes in your head, even if you don't speak them out loud. So that's a big deal. And you're going to see that in this scene. Also, something of note, um, Torin, my main hero, heroine, she's just recently moved into her home and she closed the on the house and she's moving in. And she has not met her neighbor across the street yet. So she still has this, oh, I need to meet the neighbors by. So please bear with me. And I hope you enjoy an excerpt from chapter three of King of Wishful Thinking by T.B. Bond. Two brownies in a truck is the best moving service in the world. I love them. They're fast, discreet and you can pay them in recipes. I had to toss in my great-grandmother's famous maple dill carrots. We're talking melted margarine, a kiss of brown sugar, and fresh dill. The taste would make you slap your mama, and Grandma Great would slap my bottom for giving it to the brownies. For 10 recipes, they packed, moved, and unpacked my things in an hour. For the naturals that lived in my old complex, I made a production of carrying a few boxes up to my car. A few neighbors expressed regret about me leaving. I had kept to myself, but I did appreciate the lip service. Other than curious neighbors, the move went off without a hitch. The quick move left me with plenty of time to focus on the yard. I didn't have a lot of changes for the front. I planned to add a few window boxes of pink latinas and align the walking path with purple snapdragons and petunias. The backyard would be my piece de resistance. I had a landscaper coming in the next day to give me an estimate on the waterfall fountain with the koi pond. I purchased a lattice gazebo, fire pit, and lounge furniture. The landscaper would plant wisteria in the lattice. I could already imagine the purple flower vines draping in a picturesque manner as I listened to the sound of the fountain. And then there's my garden. With summer nearly over and fall approaching, I could start with carrots, spinach, radish, turnips, lettuce, and beets. It would be perfect. Sandra popped in beside me. I checked the driveway of the house across the street. My neighbor wasn't home. It was safe to talk to her. What's up? Those moving guys are hotties. I thought brownies were supposed to be tiny, like gnomes, she said. They changed to meet the job. And for the record, so do gnomes. We lay on the front lawn. I didn't worry about anyone noticing her. Only psychics and the supernatural had the ability to see her. Those who had the ability, but not the knowledge, would think she was a regular person at a distance. My next door neighbor, well, more like across the street, still remained a mystery. Well, not a complete mystery. I knew he was good looking and of Middle Eastern descent. Otherwise, Sandra's mantle of Hottie of Arabia didn't make sense. Real cool, she sighed. You know, I haven't been outside since I died. I didn't know how much I missed it. That's the benefit of having a bond with the supernatural. The house isn't your only anchor. You can go anywhere I go until we break the bond. She hugged me. Awesome. Sounds horrible for privacy. What are we like doing it or something? I had never been a spirit anchor but I imagine it to be similar to having a roommate. We would have our disagreements, then we'd get over it. Since we connected so well, I didn't anticipate a problem that we couldn't move past. As for privacy, I grew up in a warren with 10 other people. I barely understood the word. I hadn't rutted run, in months, 
And you don't strike me as the voyeuristic type. But if hot rabbit sex turns you on, whatever floats your boat. Her eyes grew large. I guess my candor threw her for a loop. Grody! You're like my little sister. I was just joking. I laughed. Sexual appetite. I can't promise to be quiet. She playfully hit me in the arm. I don't wig out so easily. Says the ghost who let me scare her when we first met. She stuck her tongue out at me. Seriously, if we're going to live together, you should know what you're getting into. Or what's getting into you? (laughs) She snorted. Touche. I don't see my bell getting run anytime soon. Tidewater's shifter population is mostly wolves and cats. Those guys are too out of my league. I ran my hands across my velvety lawn. At dusk, I'd go for a run and stretch my rabbit's legs. Maybe it's time to settle down. I knew we were on the same wavelength. It is. I'm ready to mate and start filling my warring, but finding a mate is hard. You know, I even applied to a dating agency. She sat up. Shut up. You are too baby malicious for that. I could have set you up with Heidi. Eh? Paris and Springtime is a reputable dating agency with a proven track record of success. They have a client list a mile long and B, our neighbor can be plasma for all I care. As long as he's natural, he's off the menu. Crossing her arm, she pouted. What's your damage? Do you have something against naturals? I stood up. I was ready for dinner and for the subject to end. Nope. I get easily attached, and and not every human can accept the supernatural. It's not pretty when enforcers have to fix everything. I don't like the sound of... She held her fingers up in air quotes, fix. And it means pretty much what you think it means. Depending on the situation, it could mean a memory wipe or extermination. Yikes, she cringed. Time to change subjects. I'm going to make some dinner. Do you hang, are you going to hang out here or? Vroom, vroom. Could that motorcycle be any louder? Please don't be my neighbor. The motorcycle zoomed into the cul-de-sac and pulled into the driveway across the street. Of course, I spoke my worst fear into existence. Too good to be true. I had the perfect house, the ideal ghost binding, and I get the loud-ass neighbor on a bike. He was probably some jerk bad boy wannabe. Please don't cause trouble for me. I needed to think positive. That the guy had a motorcycle didn't mean he was bad news. It meant that he'd be loud whenever he left. My instincts would have warned me if there were a problem. I trusted my magic. Although I would feel better if we had met, he probably was not going to be the get to know the residents type, and I was too shy to initiate a greeting. I wish the situation was different and he would make the first move. Then I wouldn't have to be the grown up. Sandra threw her arm around me. <gasps> So, what do you think? Nuclear, isn't he? Not bad. He had a tight butt and muscular arms. I wanted to see his eyes. You could tell much about a person by their eyes. It told greater detail than their scent ever could. The helmet covered his face. With him standing up when, I couldn't catch his scent. She called him Hottie of Arabia. I had no doubt he was a panty dropper. Fine or not, humans were off the menu. My underwear remains safe. I'm sure he is. I better go inside before he thinks I'm some sort of weirdo talking to myself and gawking. I started for the house. There were calls to make, things to do. I had two weeks two weeks to put my house in order. Any longer and my restaurant would suffer. Already the inmates were running the asylum, but I knew the importance of setting up a warrant. I would never hear the end of it if I slacked. As it stood, my parents planned to fly in and stay with me the last few days of the staycation. I wanted everything perfect when they arrived. Look, 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 he's coming over here. Sandra spun me around. Let's do the time warp again. I sang to cover my sudden movement. What was she thinking? Moving me in front of a natural. 
We had no idea how he was going to handle living across the street from a rabbit shifter. I could end up hunted and she exercised. He removed his helmet. Ooh, she's right. He is hot. Tall, dark, and handsome. An inadequate description for Mr. Badass in jeans. At five foot two, it just everyone was taller than me. My neighbor had to be over six feet, though. His eyes and dreamy hazel reminded me of mint chocolate ice cream. His short, dark locks appeared velvety. I imagined running my hands through them to see if they were as soft as it seemed. His cappuccino skin, short and sweet, this guy was edible. Sandra had a good eye. She also made me like a lunatic in front of him. Off limits or not, I didn't want to be the crazy neighbor. Good save, he greeted as he stepped onto my property. But I can see your ghost. It's not necessary. <coughs> Sandra hid behind me. I tried to remain nonchalant, as though a ghost wasn't cowering behind me like a child and I wasn't in front of a supernatural sex guy. I hope he really wasn't a sex guy because I would be over his house offering every night. Stop being an idiot, Tori. He can probably read your thoughts or something. Speaking of or something, Hani smelled like beer and wings, just when I needed to get my libido under control. I'm a vegetarian, and I've never dated a carnivore. It would be too complicated. He probably thought I was some conservationist or something anyway. I hated it when people assumed that of me. Not consuming meat did not equal environmentalist. He was chicken, and I was carrot. I didn't see anything happening other than drama, and I didn't need the theatrics. With lust, Sort of out of the way. I could be polite and go. I wish things could be different, but it was what it was. I held out my hand. Hi, Torin Bagley, your new neighbor. He frowned and his scent soured, but he took my hand. Nadir Seif. When beautiful people scowled, it never boded well. Who painted his cornflakes? Was he afraid to have a regular person touch him or something? He was cute. I wasn't going to throw myself at him or anything. I wish stop. He yanked me towards him and covered my lips with his. The kiss tasted like ambrosia, despite the fact that he smelled of me. I didn't expect that. His firm chest pressed against mine. I know he could feel my heart racing. Men throwing themselves at me didn't happen every day. Even though I enjoyed it, I couldn't help him thinking I was fast. My mate was out there someplace, and he wouldn't take too kindly of me smelling like me. I pushed him away. I planned to slap him for good measure, but this wasn't totally me. I like the kiss. Nice, but you don't have to. Don't do that again. He stumbled back and doubled over. Sorry. I didn't shove him that hard. What kind of super was he? Not a psychic or a mage. He were basically human. He smelled cheap though some were hardier than others. I didn't expect him to be so fragile. Are you okay? I didn't mean to hurt you. I don't know my own strength sometimes. He held his arm up to me, swaying. He said, it, it's fine. See you later. His hazel eyes turned amber. His skin flushed and sweat beaded on his forehead. I didn't know what in the world happened. The guy looked like he would pass out. My mother would kill me if I had let a super who got sick of my warren, go off somewhere to possibly die. We all had to stick together, and it was bad manners. You're about to pass out. I grabbed him by the arm and threw him over my shoulder like a sack of potatoes. He gasped. Good thing he wasn't taller, or I might have hit his head on the ground. Don't worry. Once you're well, you can leave. I won't murder you or anything. I promise. You're safety at my warren as long as you behave. Come on, Sandra. Jeez, you just graced Jonestown. She fell in step beside me. I knew the reference. Grab a man and take him. The idea had some appeal. A sex slave would be nice. But not with this guy. He seemed bossy with his stop talking and let me kiss you mentality. Too alpha for me to have any fun. I did not. He got sick of my warrant. It's protocol. And he can hear you. She covered her mouth with both hands. For all her talk, shyness was the response I least expected. 
between my shy ghost friend and my ill neighbor, my plans for the night were set. I opened the door. I'm going to lay him on a sofa since I haven't put the new sheets on the guest bed yet. I made some orange juice and carrot juice. Orange and carrot juice. Please bring me a glass. Sandra floated into the kitchen. I hoped she'd be around me long enough that we could interact with solid objects, a skill that most anchor ghosts could imagine, could manage. But we hadn't practiced. I deposited my reluctant guest on the couch. His eyes were closed. Find my foot. I felt his forehead. Despite his appearance, his skin felt cool. He moaned in his sleep. Too sexy for your own damn good, I muttered. Here's the juice. Sandra handed me the glass from behind the couch. I couldn't let her strange behavior go. What's the deal? He can see me. All this time, man. I just thought I wouldn't find anyone else but you. I can understand how learning about the supernatural could be overwhelming. I lived it, the knowledge my entire life and still managed to be surprised. What do you think he is, she asked. A shifter like you? <laughs> not a shifter and definitely not aware. I would have sensed it. We had a scent that could only be described as animal. Wares even more so. His magic smelled woodsy. He probably had powers over nature. But whatever he was, I had never encountered one before him. No, he's not like me. Then what? I had no idea. It didn't matter. He was my guest in my home, and I would take care of him. We'll ask him when he's better. In the meantime, we'll keep him under. We'll keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't get any worse. Okay. He leaned against the back of the couch. She leaned against the back of the couch. So you got to tell me. Were his lips as soft as they look? Better. They were okay. Nothing to write about, especially since he pretty much passed out much after it. She frowned. You two had such a connection. I like literally saw a light around you two. He's bossy and he eats meat, Torn. Leave him be. You still have your application with Paris. The agency was sure to approve my request. Nadir would get in the way when my maid arrived. I didn't feel up to explaining, nor did I want to feel awkward about my own warn over a torrid affair. Maybe it has something to do with his magic, I guess. I walked over to her. You keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't turn into a nightlight or something. I'm going to go make dinner. She rolled her eyes. I guess no one liked my jokes. And that is the end of chapter three of King of Wishful Thinking. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, you can find me on Amazon.com or BondGirlBlue.com. Again, this is TV Bond, and thank you for listening to me. Have a great day.